In this video, we're going to look at the EMS Poly-3, which is an automated evaporation infiltration unit, especially designed for difficult to infiltrate samples. The unit itself uh, consists of a pump that will be pumping out the chamber. The chamber is heated or cooled, depending on the dehydrants, and is fully programmable and comes already loaded with programs that could be adjusted. Inside we have the chamber, which will, can be heated and cooled depending on the different dehydrant that we're using. I've processed two different samples of plant and some kidney. The kidney is really for my morphologic control. And I have spurs resin with both a three to one ratio of acetone to spurs and acetyl nitrile to spurs. I always use the glass distilled acetone to avoid any type of moisture contamination. So now I have my samples. I'm going to now get them ready to put into the Poly 3. In order to do that, I'm just going to be dumping them out into the bowl. And here's my acetone samples I'm going to do first and my 3 to 1 ratio of acetone to spurs resin. I like to use a regular beam capsule holder and that way then I don't worry about uh, getting any acetone and resin into the unit itself. The first thing I'm going to do is put some uh, of my 3 to 1 ratio of resin into each capsule. That way then when I put my samples in they already have uh, some resin and dehydrant in there. I'll put some resin and dehydrant mixture into the bowl because I'm going to just dump it out. And since I'm working with acetone, which is particularly volatile, if I were to just dump that out, they may dry out before I get them into the sample holders. So I don't want to have that happen. So we'll just dump those in there. And that way then we, they have resin, which will keep them uh, moist. So like just like you were loading any regular beam capsule. I'm just going to load the sim samples and that was a piece of kidney and put those in. And then I have the two plant samples that I'll be loading. Uh, both the Euonymus, uh, which is a smaller plant, and see how that goes. And then I've also um, done of some very large plant. There I put that in there. Now I've cut the catalpa very large on purpose because I want to check and see if this automated infiltration system will work for that as a sort of a negative control. Now I've gotten my acetone done. Now I'm going to do the same with my acetyl nitrile. I've loaded my acetyl nitrile and acetone uh, infiltrated samples into the Poly 3. I'm going to put that on and then we're going to take a look at the program that we're going to run. And this is fully programmable. It comes with programs number one for ethanol. Uh, then what, number two is generally for acetone. And then number three is for propylene oxide. I'm going to be doing number two, even though I'm running acetyl nitrile, which is more like an alcohol. And it has a, both a time and temperature that can be changed and also the vacuum. In order to change things, I can push enter and that we can see the asterisk there. And I want to go to 25 degrees centigrade. <clears throat> the 65 uh, pas mega kilopascals is good enough what I want for the very first step. And I'm like that, so I'm going to go to the next one and just push the the plus and that goes to the next. So now it's step two and that's five hours. And again, I want to change this so I get 25 degrees. So I push the enter until the asterisk goes there, change the number. And then for step number two with program two, I want 30 kilopascals. And I want to make sure that all of my different things go uh, different steps go to the 25 degrees centigrade. So we, here we can see for two hours, for step three, I'm going to go to 25 degrees centigrade as well. 25 pascals, you see we're in, uh, decreasing the pressure, increasing the vacuum, however you want to push it, uh, put it. 
And that's again step four, two hours, 25 degrees centigrade and 25 uh, kilopascals. And then the final step, 30 degrees, step five, uh, for two hours with the 30 kilopascals. Now, between steps three, four, and five, there is a six hour flush. Now, here I'm accepting that, and that looks good. And so I've got my samples in that I'm ready to go. And the last thing I have to do is push enter. And we're going to see that it starts to pump down from the 97 kilopascals. It's going to pump down. The temperature is correct, and our time's already going. And now it's gone from step one, and now it's going to go to step two. And we can see now it's five hours that it's going to be due, 25 degrees centigrade. And it's going to pump down now to the 35 uh, kilopascals that I wanted. So now, 32 hours later, our samples are all infiltrated. And I like to put them in a regular oven. I could polymerize them in the poly-3. But I had to take my samples from the plant and put them in flat embedment molds. And so I just am doing that in the oven. <clears throat> so I polymerized my samples overnight, and I'm going to be looking at the acetone dehydrated plant samples first. The kidneys all look just fine, so I'm not going to worry about those. Here's the block face after I've already uh, thick sectioned it. And as we take a look at it, we can see it's a relatively large sample, and we'll measure that a little bit. But that the sample itself, I don't see any voids. As we look down it, there's no holes uh, visible. Uh, sometimes we can see that. And if I take my ruler and measure that, I can see it's three and a half millimeters large. So when I said I was doing this as a negative control or a, uh, to see what can really be done, uh, that's a good example. As Here's the thick section. As I take a look at it, I can see one little void there. But for the most part, throughout all of the, the vascular bundle is all well infiltrated. I don't see any uh, voids anywhere, uh, especially up at the upper epithelium and the lower epithelial areas. If you've sectioned as much plant as I have, you'll recognize that that's usually a very difficult place to uh, get infiltrated. Now, I do have a little bit of a delamination, but that's because I got carried away during my trimming job and push the resin away. But on the other side, it's all uh, intact. So here's a euonymus plant. And this was a difficult one in that it's got a very waxy coating on the top and the bottom to inhibit potential infiltration. Now, as I look at this, the upper epithelium and lower epithelium all look good, but the inner part does not look like it's infiltrated. Um, and I need to look at, at the thick section to really get a good idea of what that is, whether it is or not. And in looking at the thick section, even though my camera got tilted, sorry, um, I can see that the sample is perfectly well infiltrated. Uh, both the upper epithelium, all of the vascular bundle is intact. And then looking at the upper epithelium, I see one little void there. But the chloroplasts all look very good, even though they have starch in them. And that's usually a, a negative for plants. So now we're going to look at the acetonitrile dehydrated plant tissue. And this should have generally been run with the alcohol or eth uh, ethanol, uh, which has lower pressure and higher temperatures because it's not as volatile. As I look at the thick sections, though, um, as they come off the knife, uh, they look pretty good and intact. I see in a few voids, but most of the epithelial uh, tissue is pretty good. I can see some holes uh, here in the upper epithelium, but the vascular bundle looks intact. Uh, and um, generally speaking, it looks pretty good. Again, some other little voids. And so I can see that this is going to be a little bit more difficult um, in looking at that. Again, this sample is about three and a half millimeters long. It's, it's just to show that even if your sample is big, we can get good infiltration. Uh, the vascular bundle looks good here on the thick section. I can see some voids, some holes in, in the section where the infiltration uh, didn't get quite perfect. 
um, but generally speaking it looks pretty good I've seen a lot worse uh, and uh, again some more voids as I look at the upper epithelium and some of the uh, palisade layer and such the, the chloroplast look good um, the upper epithelium uh, is pretty intact a few little uh, holes uh, but the whole section stays together and it's not too bad now here is the euonymus and um, this again has that waxy coating and it could have been run uh, with the ethanol as I look at this uh, the block face looks pretty good some of the uh, upper epithelium does so show some uh, pinhole uh, pricks uh, this is a millimeter and a half and so we'll see what the thick section looks like and overall the it looks pretty good but I can see here where the chloroplast are which generally have starch in them which are difficult to infiltrate have uh, small holes uh, pin holes within the section so some of that tissue is not perfectly done so that's a little bit concerning um, the upper epithelium looks good but again you can see the the areas where the chloroplasts are um, do appear to be uh, infiltrated uh, not well not very well infiltrated the vascular bundle looks good so acetone dehydrated samples showed perfect infiltration and for plant material especially the large ones is very good the acetyl nitrile it did for pretty well for the catalpa but the euonymus uh, most of the chloroplast created pinholes and it's not very good thank you